Okay, so in this video, I want to talk to you guys about um, creating your research paper. So in my other video, I talked about how to transform your annotated bib into your research paper. Uh, this kind of continues on that same topic. Uh, this is assuming that you've gathered your ideas from your annotated bib and that you've started the process of copying and pasting into body paragraphs and now you're ready to build the actual research paper in its various components. So I've included this document um, in your folder for you guys to access. And in this document, I've outlined the various pieces of your research paper, and it's pretty basic. I, you know, I'm not trying to, to trip you up on this, so I'm going to keep it kind of basic. So first and foremost, you have an introductory paragraph. Now, you're going to have to build this from scratch uh, because this is not in your annotated bibliography anywhere. So um, now that you have your sources, now that you've gathered your ideas, and now that you've synthesized those sources, hopefully you have an idea of um, the various subtopics that you might want to talk about in regards to your main topic. And as I've said all along, the example that I'm using for this entire process is the topic of the role of women in Hamlet. So with that in mind, I want to build my introduction. And as I point out here, your introduction really only needs to do three things. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, and I know some teachers hate this, but I think there's a lot of merit to this. I want you to build some sort of attention-getting device, a hook, a web, whatever. We've taken notes on this. Uh, we had an entire unit on this earlier in the semester. So look back over your notes on the various types of strategies that you can use for um, a hook. The second thing you want to do is you want to give me, the reader, some sort of context about your topic. Why should I care about the role of women? As the reader, what does that matter to me? You know, I'm a male living in the 2000s. Why do I care about the role of women in Shakespeare's time? So give me some context. The third thing you want to do is you want to give me your thesis. And we've taken notes on how to build a thesis. Look back over your notes. For this paper, I want you to give me an outline thesis. If you have no idea what that means, again, look back over your notes. Okay, and I've also included in here Using my topic of the role of women in Hamlet, I've given you my own example introductory paragraph. I start with a quote. Here's my attention getting device. This is a quote from Romeo and Juliet, um, another Shakespeare play. So very appropriate, not only to the topic of the role of women, but also relevant to uh, Shakespeare himself, since he also wrote Romeo and Juliet. Then I give you some uh, context, and I talk about the gender-based social status of women during Shakespeare's time, and uh, how that was reflected in his writing. And then I give my thesis, and my entire paper is going to be built around this thesis. And I say that basically Gertrude and Ophelia, the only women in Hamlet, uh, were stuck in a patriarchal society uh, where they underwent neglect, manipulation, and misogyny. This is my outline, and I've outlined for you this, the course that my paper will take. So my first body paragraph will talk about the neglect that these women faced in the play. My second body paragraph will talk about the manipulation that they experienced from the men around them. And then last but not least, I will talk about the misogyny that they experienced. There's my paragraph, simple as that. Notice that I kept it short. There's one, two, three, four sentences in my introductory paragraph. That's all you need, okay? Now, the next paragraph is a summary paragraph. You literally just need to copy and paste the summary paragraph that you made for the play itself, look back at your annotated bibliography. Find the entry that you made for the play itself. Copy and paste that summary. Okay. 
two paragraphs done. Now, even though this only has one Roman numeral here, you can have as many body paragraphs in your research paper as you want. There's no limit here. You have to have at least one. And honestly, to meet the page requirements of six to 10 pages, which is the requirement, uh, you need to have several body paragraphs. Okay, one body paragraph is not going to get you there. You'll notice that um, I told you to do an outline thesis. Well, in my outline thesis, I have three points, three subtopics, all based on the main topic of the role of women. So these are subtopics. Each one of these is going to be a body paragraph. So I'm going to have one, two, three body paragraphs in my paper. So I'll have an intro paragraph, a summary paragraph, three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. So six paragraphs. Okay, um, that's my paper. Now, what do I do in these body paragraphs? So I already showed you how to construct a body paragraph. What you want to keep in mind is that this is a synthesis paper. So each body paragraph that you give me needs to have at least two different sources in it. One of those sources should be the play itself. So in each body paragraph, I want to see quotes from the play as well as quotes from at least one of your outside sources. You can have more than that. You could have all five sources in a body paragraph if you want. It just depends on your sources that you have and what subtopics they actually address, which is why you need to go back and look at your evaluation paragraphs to see which uh, topics, which subtopics they actually address and put them in there. So, uh, but what I'm looking for in each body paragraph is I want to see at least several quotes from the play, at least a couple of quotes from the play, and at least one quote from an outside source that's not the play. Okay, that's what a synthesis is. Throughout the course of your paper, you need to make sure that all five sources, or whatever number I gave you to do, in this case uh, I said five, but if uh, you're watching this at a different time and I gave you a different number, go with that number. But uh, at the time that I made this video, uh, the requirement was five sources, the play and four others. I want to see all five sources used at least once somewhere in that paper. They don't all have to be in the same one body paragraph. You don't have to put all five sources in each body paragraph. You could do source A and B in the first body paragraph, source B and C in the second body paragraph, sources B, C, and D in the third body paragraph, or however you want to do it. I don't care. It just depends on you and your paper. But all five sources must be used at least once somewhere in your paper. And then in your conclusion, your conclusion is going to do three things. It's going to re-emphasize the point of your topic, going to re-emphasize your thesis, and it's going to leave the audience with a memorable last thought. So again, remember, my topic is the role of women. And I said that uh, they were stuck in a social system and bad things happened to them. So that's basically the gist of my thesis. So let's see what my conclusion says. Shakespeare's Hamlet primarily focused on the power of man rather than the integrity of women. Women are used as symbols of weakness, tools for the men, and depicted in a largely negative light. Now you'll notice what I did here. This is re-emphasizing my thesis. I didn't just copy and paste my thesis. I re-emphasized the points that I made in my paper. All of these being negative. Well, that fits with my example intro, where all of my points were negative. The women are oftentimes degraded throughout the play and had little worth to the men. This does not mean that Shakespeare was himself part of the sexist patriarchy. Rather, he was a rather progressive member of his era who wrote accurately of the struggles of women for the eventual betterment of his society. And so, um, as you can see, this leaves us with a lasting impression of my paper and the points that I made as a whole. And that's it.